welcome. Today I am going to unveil the PV charger that I made for my Tesla. It is a mobile PV charger. It's 1.2 kilowatts of solar. Uh, it's got a battery. It's got an inverter. And most importantly, it folds up and stows and my Model Y can fit in my garage just fine. Okay, so let's sort of walk through the outside. Uh, this is version sort of two. Um, it consists of six Renogy 175 watt panels, flexible panels, that are in 8020 frames and 8020 hinges. Um, everything is mounted with a little bit of electrical um, uh, T-slot conduit to a one-up bike rack that is capable of holding the necessary weight. Uh, the bike rack itself is about 60 pounds, maybe a little less. Um, you can buy it modular, so you can buy all these components separately, uh, including this extension up here and you can buy the handle separately. Uh, um, each of the panels once they're in the 80-20 frame weigh 12 pounds and the maximum tongue weight for the Model Y is 250 pounds. So we're not exceeding the maximum tongue weight. Uh, with the battery in the trunk it sags a little bit uh, but not too bad. Um, version 1 was too heavy. Um, everything is sort of stabilized by just a little crossbar here that that bolts in um, and there's a little bit of additional uh, steel crossbars that I added uh, to help improve the folding up. Okay, if we go to electrical connections uh, everything is in series so all these panels are in series so each one of these bundles is an MC4 uh, connection um, and then in addition, uh, there's another two panels that are in parallel with one another, uh, producing 10 amps and around 20 volts. And those come down uh, through the rain channel into the trunk, and then that, those two panels connect in series with these six panels. And there's a reason that I needed that much, uh, that many panels, is because you have to have a certain amount of voltage with the inverter. It's above 120 volts and it actually starts operating efficiently. Okay, so now that all the PV panels are laid out, you can see uh, the six panels in series, uh, all of them connected on that side. The additional PV panels are on the roof. Um, <clears throat> in the tailgate here, uh, we've got some uh, tailgate wiring and then PV wiring right here. Um, all of it goes into a few holes that I cut. You can see the PV wire conduit, um, waterproof connection there. And then there currently, it's gonna be tough to see, is a big hole right there and that's for the charge cable. All right, so the charge cable is going to come out of that hole. It's currently not waterproof. Um, so two additional holes that are cut in the trunk uh, bin. Uh, super easy to drill out. Um, very non-trivial. Okay, I've got the car opened up, so let's go ahead and go over the system. All right, I've got 200 watt panels that are Velcro to the roof with industrial strength Velcro uh, in four spots um, along the roof and then at the rear and then also at the front. There's some buckling that happened as the panels heated up after the first day, which I don't really like, but uh, it is what it is for now. And then I have some uh, industrial weatherproof Gorilla duct tape that's sort of acting as the, the seam um, kind of air block in the very front. And these things w will not come off. Um, uh, the, both these panels 
are connected in parallel to around 10 amps. Okay, and so the MC4 cables had to be clipped. I had to clean up the wiring, <clears throat> um, and the panel gap in this and this area down here is just enough such that you can fit uh, the two cables through. So they come down through the gutter and then there's a, a grommet that goes in uh, into the trunk area. Okay, and then the PV wire comes down uh, um, into the trunk uh, and then out a, the area right here, this little hole. So that's hole number two that I had to cut. Um, and then this, um, those two panels in parallel connect with all the other six panels in series. You can see that the weight has sort of pulled this rear trunk uh, out a bit. So um, the unit itself is uh, right here. We've got uh, a five kilowatt hour uh, lithium iron phosphate EG4 battery uh, paired with an EG4 inverter. The battery is around $1,500. The inverter is, I believe, eight, around uh, $750. It's capable of three kilowatts output, continuous, uh, and um, something like four kilowatts of PV you can hook up into it. So this new inverter, um, there's a, a lot of these newer inverters coming out. Um, it basically is everything in one. So it's got an inverter, it's got a charge controller. Charge controller is basically DC to DC converter, finds the max power point of the solar array and then converts it into lower voltage battery. Um, uh, lower va battery voltage, in this case it's 48 volts um, and higher current. So um, the reason I picked this is basically because of cost. Uh, the battery is a total overkill, but dollars per kilowatt hour, it's, it's, you can't beat it. Um, <clears throat> so again, the PV wire connects down here. There's sort of a bundle of cables that I've moved out of the way. Uh, and, um, you know, ultimately the AC output comes out over here. So in terms of protection, what's going on, um, the PV input goes into this box down here, and this box has a number of uh, circuit breakers in it. Um, in addition, there is a 15 amp fuse, inline fuse right here uh, for the PV. So it's fused at 15 amps, and then there's um, an additional 20 amp circuit breaker uh, where you can basically turn the PV on and off down in this box here. Okay, so that's the one on the left, and that's a high voltage DC circuit breaker bought from Northern Arizona Wind and Sun, I believe. Um, so that's a 300 volt DC uh, circuit breaker. It's important to buy a DC circuit breaker, not an AC circuit breaker, uh, because of the time it takes to actually break the circuit and the arc. All right, so um, down in this circuit breaker box, um, there are four circuit breakers. Uh, the first, all the way on the left, is for the PV. The second is for the AC, the 120 volt AC. And the third and the fourth are for the DC battery. So everything is turned off. Um, and there's a bit of a startup here if you're to actually, you know, for the very first time that you connect your battery to your inverter. Um, the battery itself has its own circuit breaker, and right now it's off. Okay. And so, um, if you just connect the, the battery to the inverter, there are capacitors inside and they charge very quickly um, and you'll get an arc. Um, and one way around that is to initially connect the battery to the inverter with a resistor. And so inside this box there's a power resistor um, that will allow the bat capacitors to charge slowly and then you can turn <clears throat> on the battery, main circuit breaker, and then simply disconnect that um, power resistor that's in series. So we can go ahead and do that and make sure the, the way you can tell is you will not uh, get a fault over here uh, in, in any, um, on the battery. And this is sort of a known issue with kind of all these off-grid inverters. Okay, so we'll power up the battery. Okay, 
So now there's 48 volts going down into this box. I will turn on the resistor. Okay. And so that's going to slowly charge up the battery. All right. And wait, I don't know, maybe five, 10 seconds. And then we can go ahead and flip on the 48 volts to the battery, turn the resistor off. Okay, and at this point, we can go under here and turn on the actual inverter. Okay, so that safely charges up the capacitors and turns the inverter on. Uh, then we can go back down to the box, can flip on our circuit breaker for the um, for the PV, excuse me, and finally turn on the circuit breaker for AC. And you can see once I do that, the cooling fan turns on. Uh, this cooling fan just sort of helps get heat out of the trunk into the cabin so that the cabin overheat uh, you know, works perhaps a little bit more effectively. Okay, I've got my PV car charge cable running through the trunk. Uh, it's down in the bottom. It's currently charging. And we can scroll through and just see what our little display here shows. Okay, so we can sort of see what's going on here. Uh, we've got an input PV of 120 volts. That's a max power point. Uh, 7 amps, 947 watts. I'm shading the panel a bit, so one of the panels that's going to be a little low. This is input to battery, so right now I'm not charging the battery, um, which means I'm drawing from it. <clears throat> Battery's at 51 volts. Uh, the load is currently at 63% of the output. Okay. And I'm charging at 1.9 kilowatt kilowatts, excuse me. So that means I've got it set to 16 amps. I actually haven't checked that. And so that, you know, I have the uh, different adapter that allows you to do that. And so I'm actually pulling from the battery and supplementing it with with solar at this point. Go scroll through these. Battery is at 39%, and again, no AC input, so this is not uh, connected to the wall or anything. I've lowered the charge current to 5 amps just so we can get a better idea of what's going on here. Um, <clears throat> So now we've got 1.02 kilowatts of PV coming in. And I'm currently charging the battery at 405 watts. Uh, let's focus there, yeah. So, so right now, since I'm charging only at 5 amps, I can charge both the battery and the car at the same time. And we can go back down, there's the load, so the load is 600 watts, so charging the car at 600 watts. Okay, so that basically summarizes it for now, uh, I'll give some updates, I still need a few more things, need an additional inline fuse for the battery, um, and a few updates here and there to kind of make it a little easier to use, but overall it's working well. Um, as long as no one drives over it, I think it's good to go. And you can see that, you know, system closes nicely. Plenty of clearance for the two PV wires up there. Um, and the charger's safely locked in the trunk. And so, um, you know, I've been monitoring how hot it gets back in the trunk area with the cabin overheat. So cabin overheat, you know, keeps it around 100 Fahrenheit. And it's around 110 in that trunk, depending on, you know, how um, 
faster charging. So um, these batteries can certainly handle that. It's not ideal for long life, but um, you know it may not last 10 years. It may last five years. So, but there we go. This could be one of the first mobile, truly mobile kind of permanent PV systems for an electric vehicle.